during the race for new technologies and trying to get the upper hand in World War II. Behind the curtains a race took place on both sides, to develop the first usable jet engines and use them to put jet-powered aircraft in service. Maybe the two most famous jet-powered fighter planes from World War II were the Messerschmitt Me 262 on the German side and the Gloucester Meteor developed by the British. Today we will take a look at these two planes, and though they never faced each other in the skies before World War II ended, we will try to compare their strengths and weaknesses. The two earliest jet fighters in active service never fought each other directly, but they were milestones in aviation. So when and how were they developed, and why they never met in a fight? The concept of the jet engines was explored well before World War II. The limited efficiency of the propeller was a concern for engineers even between the two world wars. They foreseen that the propeller-driven planes will reach their limits fairly soon. The experiments with jet engines already started back in the 1920s, though the propeller-driven planes were still getting faster and better all the way until the end of World War II. Frank Whittle, the man known as the pioneer of the jet engine development, drew up his first idea in 1928 and had a working prototype and completed test runs on it in April 1937. About the same time when Mittel was working on his engine in Britain, there were similar experiments in Germany by Hans von Ohain. He was working on his jet engine project through the 1930s and finished the first test run in September 1937, just a few months after Mittel's engine. So the race was on who will put the jet engines to use first, and the Germans gained the lead in 1939 as the world's first jet aircraft, the Heinkel HE-178, made its first flight powered by one of Ohain's engines in August, just a few weeks before the invasion of Poland. Interestingly, the British at first didn't show the same enthusiasm towards the jet engine as the Germans. It took them years to get to their first jet-powered flight, which only happened in 1941, with the Gloucester E-2839, so the Germans gained a big head start. By that time the German development already entered its next phase, as their jet fighter prototypes made test flights already, though first only in glider mode, but not long after they performed jet powered flights as well. The first German jet powered fighter plane, the Heinkel HG280, made its first flight on its own power in March 1941, but for various reasons this plane didn't go to production. If you want to know more about its history, I have already made a separate video on that. Because the ME-262 only appeared at the end of the war, many think it was just one of the last attempt wonder weapons. But actually it was already under development before the beginning of World War II, under the name Project 1065. The goal for this project was to create a jet powered aircraft capable of speeds above 850 km an hour. The first design was drawn up and submitted by mid-1939, and it was a bit different from the final design, but not by much. The biggest difference is, the first design featured straight wings and wing root mounted engines, instead of the engine pods under the wings. On later variants the engines were moved out to the engine pods for easier access, which was important as the early jet engines usually only lasted a few hours. Meanwhile in the United Kingdom, though Frank Whittle worked on his jet engine through the 1930s, the government was not really interested in his work until the war broke out. But finally in 1939 they received another visit from the Air Ministry, and Vittor managed to run his prototype engine for 20 minutes, which convinced many of the visitors. The Ministry agreed to buy the prototype and placed an order for a flyable version of the engine. They also issued specification E2839 and started talks with the Gluster company for an experimental aircraft to test the engine as a proof of concept. Vittor and George Carter, the chief designer at Gloucester, soon laid out the design. It was a conventional looking aircraft with the Vittor W1 jet engine in the center, the intake in the nose and a tricycle undercarriage. The first prototype flew in May 1941 and proved that the jet aircraft concept is working. Even before this flight, the Air Ministry already issued another specification in 1940 for a jet powered fighter aircraft. By August 1940, George Carter presented the initial plans for this specification. The aircraft used a twin engine design because of the low output of the early jet engines. And with that we arrive to the most troublesome part of these planes, the engines. 
the engine development and manufacturing during the war was the biggest problem for the jet fighter projects. In Germany in the first half of the war, when confidence was high, many high-ranking officials were convinced the war could be won easily with conventional aircraft. Hermann Göring cut back the jet engine development program to just 35 engineers. Germany also had a shortage of metals needed to withstand the extreme heat and pressure in the jet engines. So early engines were so short-lived, they often only lasted for one flight. Although the ME262 airframe was basically ready by 1942, the lack of engines available prevented mass production until 1944. To overcome this, German engineers changed most of the rear materials in the engines to mild steel with aluminum coating. This simplified production, but it was a big compromise, as the turbines in the engines only lasted for about 30 hours. The British were not immune either to the problems the Germans faced developing their jet aircrafts. They also had to realize that the problem is not the airframe, but the engines. Wittel's company developing the jet engine was small, with no manufacturing capacity, so the ministry recommended them to work together with the Rover car company. But this cooperation was very troublesome. Rover's engineers made changes to the design behind Wittel's back, and the communication between the two companies completely broke down over time. The disagreements and differing views on development in the end resulted in almost two years wasted, with basically no progress on the engine. But luckily for the Meteor project, Rolls-Royce stepped in and made a deal with Rover. They offered to take the jet engine project from them, and in exchange, give their tank engine factory to Rover. The deal was made, and Rolls-Royce took over the project. They assigned around 2,000 people on it, and by January 1943, they worked out most of the problems. Though the ME262 is known as the first fighter aircraft with fat wings, this was not actually in the initial plans, and it wasn't just used because of its better aerodynamics. The main reason the plane had swept wings was because the jet engines were heavier than originally planned. So to keep the weight in the correct position, the wings were swept back, so the airframe doesn't need to be modified to move the whole wing further back. On the first five prototypes, only the outer edge of the wings were swept, and the inner part, between the fuselage and the engine nacelles, remained straight. Later wing tunnel tests showed the advantage of the full swap design, so from the V6 prototype onwards, all planes have the signature 18.5 degree swap wings. The test flights began in April 1941 with the V1 prototype. Though the jet engines were not ready at that time, so a conventional piston engine was installed in the nose. The first true jet flight came with the V3 prototype in July 1942. The ME262 wasn't initially designed with a tricycle landing gear. Up until the V4 prototype, all of them were built with a conventional tailwheel setup. This was found to be a problem, as the jet exhaust deflected up from the runway and interfered with the elevators on takeoff. On the V5 model, they switched to a fixed tricycle landing gear setup, and on the V6 to a fully retractable tricycle landing gear, which was then retained all the way in production. The Gloster Meteor used a twin engine design, just like the ME262, but it had straight wings with a much larger surface area. On the first few variants, the ailerons were actually deliberately made heavy to prevent overstressing the wings. The Meteor's first flight happened in March 1943, but since the Rolls-Royce engines were not ready, it used engines Frank Halford developed. The first flight with the Rolls-Royce made engines happened in June 1943. The first production Meteor F1 flew in January 1944, it was basically identical to the prototypes, except for the armament, which was four 20mm Hispano cannons. The F3 variant was the first to be built in large scale. The first 15 units still used the original Welland engines, based on Witter's design, but the rest was built with the Rolls-Royce developed Derwent engines. They also featured an upgraded sliding canopy and increased fuel capacity. The last 15 of them were built with longer engine nacelles, which increased the maximum speed by 75 miles an hour. And with that we arrive to the technical specifications of the aircrafts, where we will compare the ME262 to the Meteor F3, as that was the most advanced version used during World War II. The next F4 version was introduced shortly after the war ended in Europe. The Gloster Meteor was 12.57 meters long, with a wingspan of 13.11 meters. It had an empty weight of 3,996 kg, 
and a maximum weight of 6032 kg. It was powered by two Rolls-Royce Derwent engines. With these engines, it could reach a maximum speed of 836 km an hour, a service ceiling of 13,400 meters, and a range of 2,160 km. It had a rate of climb of 20 meters per second. The ME262 was 10.6 meters long, with a wingspan of 12.6 meters. It had an empty weight of 3,795 kg and a maximum weight of 6,437 kg. It was powered by two Junkers Jumo 004 engines. It had a maximum speed of 900 km an hour, with a service ceiling of 11,450 meters and a range of 1,050 km. Both planes carried a heavy armament. The Gloster Meteor was equipped with four 20mm Hispano cannons, while the ME262 carried four 30mm MK108 cannons. On paper, the ME262 was a faster aircraft, but the Meteor had a huge advantage over the German plane. It was much more reliable. It was said to be just as reliable as the Spitfire and other propeller-driven planes, while the ME262 was plagued with problems. This was especially true for the earlier mentioned engine problems. The weight and thrust on the two aircraft were very similar, just like the climb rate, but the Meteor also had almost twice the range of the ME262. It was also easier to fly and more maneuverable thanks to its bigger wing area. They both carried heavy weapons. The 262 used bigger caliber cannons but with lower velocity, so they were harder to aim. Though the ME262 had its first flight one and a half years before the Meteors, they entered service almost the same time. The ME262 first entered service in April 1944 with a test unit and started flying operational missions in August the same year. Meanwhile, the Gloster Meteor entered service in July 1944 with the RAF and flew their first combat mission on 27 the same month. The shorter range of the ME262 was not actually a big drawback. By the time they started to fly missions, the Luftwaffe was on the defensive, and they fought Allied fighters and bomber formations over Germany. Though the Meteor had a longer range, it was not really used at first, as the Allies were afraid to lose them to the Germans, so they were not allowed on missions over the continent until January 1945. Until then they were mainly used to counter the German bus bombs. When they were finally deployed on the continent, they were sent to Belgium, but they were still restricted to fly over German-controlled territory. The Allies didn't want the Germans to capture one of these top-secret aircrafts. Neither did they want the Soviets to get their hands on them. Meanwhile, the ME262 started to fly attack missions against the Allied bomber formations. Though they were successful in this role, their low numbers didn't make any difference at this stage of the war. They were also using ground attack role against the Red Army in the last weeks of the war. The Meteors were also deployed to ground attack role late in the war, and they claimed 46 German aircraft destroyed on the ground. Though the Meteor pilots were eager to go up against the German Wander plane, this battle didn't happen in World War II. If it would have happened, it's very hard to tell which aircraft could have the upper hand. They were pretty evenly matched. The ME262 was faster, but not by much. The Meteor was more maneuverable and more reliable. Though both sides were pushing for technical superiority and to apply the jet technology, in the end it didn't affect the outcome by much, as the war ended before the new planes could have made an impact. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe to my channel and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.